is uh, going to be the first presentation is going to be done by Andy Lane and Bobo Ivan, uh, and it's going to be about colonizing the curriculum. Uh, so I would like to now ask Andy to please comment. And also a reminder to the participants, if you have questions for the, for the presenters, please post, post them into the chat window. Thank you very much. Andy, please Legal go ahead. And welcome everybody. Uh, you'll see there are three names associated with this presentation. Rachel uh, cannot be with us today, but I will start off this talk and then Bobo will complete it. Uh, and we're talking about, as I say, colonizing the curriculum uh, or decolonizing the curriculum is, is obviously a very hot topic at the, the moment, and it's very much about how uh, different people take on or are not really acknowledged, or their traditions and histories are not very acknowledged in the curriculum that's provided for them. Uh, and of course, that often comes from a lot of colonial histories around the world uh, in terms of these, these things, types of developing. But what we want to look at here is what is happening at the moment. So it's not what's happened in the past, but what's happening at the moment. And this is in particularly one developing country. This is Myanmar, as we come on to. And it's through a particular element of, uh, of education, which is education for sustainable development, which we've already heard about in, in both previous presentations uh, this morning. Now, the sustainable development goals we've already heard about I'm sure you're all aware about them. There are 16 sector goals and there's a 17th on partnerships. They cover a big area. All these things to be achieved by 2030. So this is, this is a big agenda globally. Uh, and it's how does open education fit into some of these? We heard in the last uh, workshop about how open education is, is trying to be, or openness is trying to be incorporated into thinking about the sustainable development goals. Again, I said, we want to talk about a specific element of it. And it's particularly around goal four and quality education. So goal four has lots of different targets. There are 10 targets or so here. I'll just move on to that from that quickly because I won't talk about them all. We want to talk about one specific target that says by 2030 ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development including among others through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace, non-violence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contrib contribution to sustainable development. Now, I think that's, that's very important to read that out in full because it, it is not just about education, about sustainable development, but it is about all these other things and the cultural contributions from around the world. So it's not just one cultural contribution, it is cultural contribution. You know, the sustainable development goals themselves were determined by a big consultation process. And so in terms of implementing, you've also got to think about how do different countries and nations work together to actually provide education for sustainable development that is both globally relevant, but locally important. I've already said what we're talking about are, are going to be two projects that are working in Myanmar. Some people may know it as Burma. That's historically how it's been, been called. Now, Myanmar has obviously got a, a very long history, but its most recent history has been one of difficulties and conflict. So it's only had a sort of quasi democratic system about the last nine, 10 years after 48 years of dictatorship. So throughout that time, it's had a prolonged isolation from the international community. And it's also had and still does have quite a bit of political unrest and civil wars happening between the army and ethnic armed organizations. And that's been going on for a very long time, since uh, for at least 70 years. And throughout all this, education was manipulated and controlled. Since there's been these crazy democratic reforms since 2011, and, and the, the election of the National League for Democracy taking the majority of seats in, in, the, in the government. 
they've initiated education reforms. This can be seen in a national education strategic plan from 26 to 21, and the new one is being developed to, get to cover, cover the next five years. So this has been a, a, a time for education reform and for the reconstruction of the higher education institutions in Myanmar. So the first project I'm going to talk about where we're trying to look at these issues is called TIDE, Transformation by Innovation and Distance Education. Now this is UK aid funding from the Foreign Wealth Common and Development Office and it's nearly through, it's nearly four years of operations. We started in March 2018 running to 2021 and we're aiming to improve the quality of distance education in Myanmar at this time and trying to also catalyze higher education reform by supporting the development of the, the, the the second national education sector plan. So it's focused on underpinning the distance education provision through teaching, technical skills and capabilities and open and distance education, but also by developing knowledge and capacity in education for environment and sustainable development as we've termed it in within the project. So the project is a consortium it's led by the Open University, but it has the Universities of Oxford and the University of Manchester from the UK also involved. It has three Myanmar universities, Yangon University, Yadanarbon University, and Yangon University of Distance Education, as well as a, a, an international non-governmental orga organization, the Irrawaddy Policy Exchange, which is helping in country with what we're doing. Now, the importance of this is that we're working with 40 higher education institutions out of about 170 higher education in institutions in uh, Myanmar. But these 40 are involved in distance education and they teach about 60% of all the higher education students. So it's very big. But the way it has been structured is that there are two distance education universities, Yangon and Mandalay universities of distance education, who will be producing the textbooks students have to study and also do some broadcasts. So it's a form of distance education that is now becoming less common, more outdated as digital infrastructure improves and online education, and use of digital tools and techniques becomes more common. So part of what we're trying to do within TIDE is to help them develop their capacities to create open educational resources, create new programs, create ones that are relevant to environment and sustainable development, because they don't do that at the moment. Their curricula are much more traditional. So across these universities, also known as arts and science universities, they may teach geology, they may teach geography or chemistry or physics. They don't teach environment as such, and they certainly don't relate any of this to sustainable development. So there's a sort of big challenge that's present for us. Now this just sets out, this project is about four and a half million dollars, million um, pounds sterling being provided for this project. So it's a very big project involving a lot of people. We're working with over 300 university staff from across those 40 higher education institutions around these three major areas, enhancing staff capacities, enhancement of programs, and the approaches to strengthening of higher education and distance education systems in Myanmar. I'll just move on quickly to the next one because this is a, an influence diagram. That first diagram showed things in silos. But these things are all connected. And again, I'm not going to go through all this, but you can see it's color coded for the things that cover programs, people, systems, and structures again. But at the bottom there, you'll see open education resources. So open education resources have been a key element of what we're doing in terms of teaching them about learning design, teaching them about Creative Commons licensing, about how to use open education resources to create and supplement programs they're already offering. And so this is very much important in their own professional development and in terms of also making the curriculum more relevant to the students of today through employer needs, the expected graduate attributes for those students, um, uh, and other things in terms of competency frameworks that may be 
beginning to emerge in Myanmar. So we're trying to make all these things fit together to make sure that the, the education for environment and sustainable development practices are can start be started within these institutions as they start their own reforms. And as has recently happened, is the responsibility for those distance education students has been taken away from the distance education universities and are now centered on all these arts and science universities who are involved in supporting the distance education students at the moment. So this is start of a move to create a greater autonomy through what's called one campus, two systems. And these arts and science universities have their own campus students, but now they have much greater responsibility and have to provide new programs for these new students. But there's a question of whose curriculum they are trying to develop here. And so we're promoting open educational practices and use of OERs, but most of those are in English and also come from Western universities. So while we are encouraging them to provide relevant local examples and case studies, does that truly reflect or fully reflect the cultural traditions and diversity of Myanmar? And of course, even talking about education for sustainable development and sustainable development, there are different understandings on it as well. Is that the same everywhere? Can you have the same understandings everywhere? Do we need to localize those as well? And so what activities should higher education institutions do to contribute to all this? We've seen education for sustainable development tested and reviewed and in, initiated around the world. But much of this practice is heavily informed by Western ideology and culture rather than Asian ones. So we need to have a different look at it. And this is where Bobo comes in. Over to you, Bobo. Hi, thank you, Andy. So hi, Bobo from Myanmar. I'm doing my doctoral research in UK at the Open University. And this studentship is funded by GCRF. And here are my three research questions. My research will try to understand how Myanmar higher education conceptualize ESD and how about the related graduate attributes in our own context and what changes are needed to develop uh, ESD. Next, please. And in my research, I use two main models, and this is the first model I try to make adaptation built on other scholars. And this model heavily focused on looking at how ESD is thought of or implemented in different universities in different cultural contexts. In my literature review, I found mostly scholars and university are focusing on curriculum and campus like green campus uh, operations. I try to also think about uh, pedagogy, or I prefer to use andragogy for the university education. It can be also uh, applicable integration component in this model. But we also need to be mindful how these integration models are in, should be interpreted in our Myanmar context. Next, please. And the second model is about the education construction model developed by Anu Eto. And this model is very relevant to the countries emerging from the troubled times, for example, like prolonged civil wars like Myanmar. And among the five uh, reconstruction process, ideological reconstruction is being highlighted here in order to reflect the tensions between the global or the Western perspectives and the Asia or our Myanmar perspectives how ESD should be alike, like Dr. Andy mentioned earlier. Thanks. Uh, I, I did a pilot study last December, or focus group discussions and interviews with the university teachers and students. And this initial study also has given an initial view of some key challenges in the integration of ESD in Myanmar higher education institutes like ESD awareness, curriculum reform, teachers' competency, stakeholders' engagement, and transformational leadership or administration, mostly highlighted by the students and the teachers. Next, please. And 
like when we think about the integration models, uh, it is also important to see these integration models are relevant to our country context, Myanmar, because Andy already mentioned that Myanmar has recently transformed into a civilian so-called quasi-democratic country. And now we are uh, doing educational reform and reconstruction, but uh, there is no research on the ESD in Myanmar until now. So we have a lot of questions like how ESD curriculum, I mean, formal curriculum has already been set out in the global scale and has an educational resources. And how about the informal learnings? Uh, and to how extent our curriculum design will be shaped or uh, informed by our tradition or cultures, as well as the global knowledge. And is it a kind of dominance by the powerful society over the minority cultures? And five minutes left. Yep. <laughs> And as Andy mentioned already, like Thai project has been helping for the capacity development of Myanmar universities. But we have a question like, is it still promoting a Western or global view of open education and ESD or leading to the colonizing of the curriculum? Although they might have beautiful intentions. So, uh, but at the same time, uh, Myanmar also needs international aid and support for educational reforms and reconstruction. But it looks like we open the drawers and all the global solutions are brought to the forefront. forefront. So at this time, we have a lot of questions than the answer, but we are very keen to listen to the local people perspective. And also we may need to learn from this Thai project experience. So to be concluded, uh, we have to acknowledge the mutual learning and we also need collaboration if we want to co-develop a curriculum in order to help achieving the sustainable development goals. Thank you very much. There are some references. Yeah, I wish to follow some of these up. Great, thank you very much, uh, both Andy and Bobo. A lovely work, and you have been getting some really complimentary remarks in the chat window too. We have about three minutes left for questions, so I would like to encourage all of the participants here to please pose questions for uh, for the presenters directly in the chat window, or you can unmute yourself and ask a question too. But I think I've seen one question, I think from Just uh, Kormeling, uh, who is asking, and I think that's probably for both of you, did you have some type of basis or quite of basis to initiate OER? And then in brackets, experience in Myanmar, experts, policy, government, question mark. So the the, the TIDE project uh, that came about through lots of negotiation and, and discussions with um, the Ministry of Education in Myanmar initially, and this is before there was even a call for the funding to the SPHERE program from which we're getting our, our funding. So th there was a lot of discussion about, they, they, they knew they wanted to reform the distance education system. They came to the uh, UK, they came to the Open University and say, how could you help us? Um, and so we, we then started having discussions and talks about this. And as, uh, a, as a funding round came available, we thought we, there's somewhere we can apply for funding, we began to work through with everybody. You'll see that the partnership involved Myanmar universities, as well as three UK universities. We, we really sort of talked about what was needed. And, and again, it was a conversation, but it's because of the Open University's long experience around open education, not just distance education, that we thought, and certainly myself as the academic director for the project, that we wanted to get open education resources in there. Because if we're going to do things across the, that many institutions and get them to work together or collaborate in thinking about how they can do things, then a great way to do that is to open educational practices and not to get hung up on well, whose curriculum is this and whose content is this and what is the copyright. I mean, it's also the case that until very recently, the copyright law in Myanmar was over a century old. It's from colonial times, from the when the British were, were, were controlling uh, Burma stroke Myanmar. And so we're, we're having to do this within a, a particular framework, particularly around licensing, which was not so easy. So this just, just offered so much opportunities to introduce the whole aspects of open education 
into the Myanmar system as it's reforming. So I think if we can make these system level changes as well as sort of individual level changes, then we could have a significant long lasting impact. Thank you very much, uh, Andy. And just one very quick question from Beat uh, Oderman here from Uganda. He's asking whether you have any suggestions on how we can implement your ideas on a secondary school level. And if you feel like this is a bigger conversation, uh, you can obviously continue. I, 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 I think it good. is. Because, because it, 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 that's mainly because it's uh, all these things are contextual. You might imagine from what we've talked about, it's not just saying you do this at university level, you do this at secondary school level the context, which country you're working on, the shape of the educational system makes a difference to how you might approach it. Uh, let me add a little bit. Yep. Yes, go on, uh, Because now currently uh, uh, there is also ongoing projects uh, implemented by UNESCO and I think TICA support for the secondary level educations and they're trying to integrate EST uh, in the curriculum, and also they support a lot of teacher pre-service uh, teachers' uh, colleges, like uh, we call education and colleges in Myanmar. And now they are also running these kind of ESD integration. Uh, but my research will focus at the university level, but uh, we want to try to make it sure that the conceptualization on ESD in our university and Myanmar context. Thank you very much, Bobo. So unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, so thank you very much to both of you, um, to Andy and to Bobo. And Bobo, best of luck with your further PhD research engagements. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and a beat. Uh,